What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Listography. Jason, Joe, and Crams are here. Side three of Black Crows Week. I think it's... Uh, Side, three. Side pretty... three where nothing matters. <laughs> yeah, side three, nothing matters. Uh, someone on Instagram told us that we need to work on our side three videos and uh, get them up to the quality of our other videos, but Just... side three is really about the, the comment section and just having a discussion, the community, the effort we put into these is, uh, I mean, we put a lot of effort into our other videos. Side three is an afterthought, admittedly. But today uh, we're talking about the Black Crows. And I think it's fairly obvious to everyone that's ever heard the Black Crows that uh, they were heavily influenced by the faces, the stones, uh, maybe a little Aerosmith, maybe some other bands, but mostly those groups. Uh, I think it would be fair to call them a little derivative, but to that I would say, who cares? And uh, so today that's the topic. Bands that are a bit derivative or a lot derivative that you like anyways. I'll start it off. Um, I'm going to try to go newer here. <laughs> I'm going to go Ed Sheeran and his obviousness to Black Sabbath. No, I hate Ed Sheeran. Let's get real here. Um, I'll go, I'm going to try to keep it new. I'm going to go with an album that came out this year, 2021. I can't remember if they have other albums or not, but it is a group called Vision Video who sound just like The Cure. Exactly like The Cure. There's no other way to think of it. You will identify them as these guys really like The Cure within seven to 12 seconds of the first song on the first album. However, I love it. I don't mind it whatsoever. It's different enough that you can tell um, them apart, but there's no doubt about it. It's gothy, 80s, kind of does like the lonesome Robert Smith kind of thing. And it's just, it just is what it is. It is incredibly derivative, not on the likes of like, Greta Van Fleet, but it's it's pretty close to be honest, but it's still awesome. I'm also gonna go with not the early, early stuff by the 1975, but the newer stuff, definitely they've been listening to a lot of Peter Gabriel specifically. So it has got that 80s big kind of whimsical art popness to it um, with just like, you know, every song kind of sounds like a combination of like Sledgehammer and, um, you know, that voice again, just kind of all blended in with the synthetic horns coming in and stuff, but it works great. I have no problem with it. I'm going to go with a band Joe Hates. Maybe until we do the discography, it usually takes a deep dive in the albums where Joe's like, I hate them and I love to hate them, but they're fine. I'm going to go with Interpol and obviously the vocals lifted pretty heavily from Ian Curtis. With a, uh, 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 it's, it's a vibe and it works big time. I think Interpol is much better than that. But when people say like, oh yeah, they like the indie like the reboot of like joy division i'm like yeah all right like if you haven't heard them i get where you're coming from that's fine but i love interpol we all know this um let's see who else we got here i i'm gonna go with one of my all-time favorite artists that no one has been around so long that no one ever really talks about being derivative but i really sometimes think especially early like 70s bruce springsteen kind of just Bob Dylan and Elvis Presley like put together like he's got kind of the songwriting craft of Bob Dylan especially in the early stuff and then the way he kind of like works up the crowd and dances and plays the guitar and isn't like a bit of a sex symbol it's like the 70s Jersey Elvis to me at times um and then let's go with uh let's go with the Wallflowers who are obviously Jacob Dylan channeling his father Bob and with mixed with like a little bit of Tom Petty, it's pretty obvious what they're going for, just with like more 90s pop rock flair. But I don't mind it. I think the Wallflowers are a pretty underrated group. I don't think they're all time great, but I think they're much deeper than Sixth Avenue, Heartache, and um, what's the other one that sounds exactly like it? Um, bringing on a headlight or whatever, one headlight. So yeah, I don't think they get the credit they deserve. I like them. Don't care their derivative. I've got a few more, but let's see what you guys got. Did you say bringing on the headlight? 
So the mashup You're of Def Leppard. And... on the headline. <laughs> uh, that's great. Um, I'll do mine. I'm going to go with the two best Led Zeppelin ripoffs of the last 50 years. Greta Van Fleet and Kingdom Come, my uncle's band. I think they're both great. I don't care what anyone says. They're underrated. Kingdom Come never really said it that much, like Zeppelin anyway. Greta Van Fleet, yeah, they, they did. They're expanding a little bit though. Their latest album, not quite as Zeppelin-y. Band that got uh, really compared to Nirvana. And I think they broke out of that eventually, but Silverchair, I dig Silverchair. I, th I thought they were a pretty cool band. I like the way they expanded their sound afterwards, but. When they started out, they were pretty much just Nirvana, and that's fine. Um, more recent bands to two here. We'll do Temples. Uh, kind of sounds like Tame Impala's kind of like throwback. They kind of bring in a little 60s kind of sound to them, but they're wildly unoriginal, but I, th I think they're pretty cool. Uh, and then we'll do one that's kind of changed who they ripped off uh, from album to album. The Killers. Everyone, everyone said they sounded like Duran Duran on their first album because they like brought back like keyboards and stuff. They kind of like Las Vegas sound. And then they very kind of conspicuously decided to be Bruce Springsteen. Kind of got away from that a little bit, but their latest album was like super Bruce Springsteen. So uh, they, they kind of vary from whom they're ripping off, but they have, a, they have a good sound anyway. They can do it well. And that's it. That's everybody. All right, for mine, I'll start out with a record that I recommended on our record mendation series. Uh, the Explorers Club, coming out of the gate sounding a whole lot like the Beach Boys. Second record, sound a whole lot like Burt Bacharach and AM, 70s AM radio. Um, I, I don't care, I, I enjoy their records. Um, after that, I'll go with Foxygen, who uh, sound like a mishmash of a lot of like late 60s, early 70s stuff, Velvet Underground, Bowie, Dylan, whatever, throw it all in a blender and you get Foxygen. Uh, it has been sort of a, a thing that is criticized about them, but it doesn't bother me a bit. I love the records. Same can be said. For another closely related act to the, uh, Foxygen, because these brothers play on some of the Foxygen records, talking about the Lemon Twigs, uh, same sort of deal, classic rock, just uh, pulling from all different influences, uh, kind of comes out sort of original sometimes, but sometimes it doesn't, and it doesn't matter to me, I still enjoy it. Neither of you said STP? So yeah, that, that was the, the big thing with their debut record, getting compared to some of the other grunge bands and Pearl Jam. I mean, it's debatable how much actually was, but I don't know. Even if it is, even if Scott Weiland <laughs> told me that it was intentionally made to sound like Pearl Jam, I don't care. It's, it's, I still like it. And the last one, definitely not a favorite artist of mine. Uh, but I guess by the time this video comes out, you will know all about how I feel about this band. Um, but Coldplay, I think always get the early, early on, they were always compared to like, they were like radio headlight or something compared to some other kind of Britpop bands too. At the time, I think their first several records are, are solid and, uh, after that, man, let's see. <laughs> Joe. Is Joe frozen? Joe looks frozen. There you go. Well, we lost Joe. We've lost Joe previously. He got his two cents in. I'm kind of surprised he didn't say Muse, which is like one to one Queen and Radiohead, but. I had Olivia Rodrigo on there with the Paramore thing and War on Drugs. I get kind of like Springsteen Dire Straits, but yeah, 
I don't mind unless it's a pure ripoff. Like, you know, you can, it's kind of an instinctual thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, you can take it pretty far and I'll be cool with it. But there is a line that you can cross where it can be a little too much. But for the most part, I don't, I don't mind if you're sounding a lot like someone else. As long as your songs are good. I mean, you, you still have to write good songs, but. Yeah, that's fine. But sometimes it's too much, like Greta Van Fleet. No, Joe's gone. We can just bash Greta Van Fleet. <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty good impression. That's all he does. Every note is just like, you are as lovely as the sun. It's, it's like, oh, God, it's just awful. What a shame, because that guitarist, he can wail, but ugh. All right. Well, we'll have a whole video about it. All right, everybody, let us know what you think about derivative music. Which derivative artists do you still like anyways? Or are there none? Do you think music has to be 100% original every time? Um, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications. Check out Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our website. You can find them down in the description. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.